Well, hey guys, good morning. Big A coming to you from the rainy station camp Greenway. You can see those waves behind me in that creek, man. I'm waiting on Noah's Ark to come float by any minute. Hey, I hope you had a great weekend. Mine was spectacular and I'm fired up and ready to go for this October week. I think we're going to crush it this week. I hope you guys do as well. Hey, do, who do you call friend? Let me tell you the reason I asked that question. Man, I've been so guilty of calling acquaintances friends for a number of years, and I was called out years ago about that. This past week, I was writing a post, and it was on my friend slash acquaintance, and I'll explain more about that in a minute, Daniel Lappin. He's Rabbi Daniel Lappin. What a great guy. He wrote a book called Thou Shalt Prosper, and if you haven't read that book, you need to read it. It's the Ten Commandments on Making Money. And don't judge the book until you read it. It is outstanding. It is a fabulous read. And let me tell you the reason I was convicted about that. When I was writing the post, I put in there, a good friend of mine wrote the book, Thou Shalt Prosper. And then all of a sudden, I started thinking about that. And I said, you know, is he a good friend? I mean, we've had a meal together. He's been... Uh, invited to the mastermind and I've interviewed him a couple of times but the truth of the matter is he's an acquaintance he's somebody that we've had casual conversation and I started thinking about it when I was writing the post I said why did I say that like what was my motive in writing my good friend Rabbi Daniel Lappin and I thought I want other people to know I know him you see, that goes back to ego and pride. And I think through it so many times over the years, the times that I've tried to give the impression that I knew certain people, and it was just to stroke my own ego and my own pride. You know, about a year and a half ago, I got a phone call from a guy, and we love to talk about guns together. And he said, Big A, doesn't Ronnie Barrett have a place in Nashville, Barrett Arms? He makes the 50 caliber machine gun and you gun enthusiasts know who that is. And I said, yeah, it's right here in Murfreesboro, just outside of Nashville, and I know Ronnie. And he went, you are kidding me. And I said, no, no, I know Ronnie. And then I started thinking about it. I said, I don't know Ronnie. I have met Ronnie at a friend's of mine's house. We watched a football game together. And what's funny about it is he didn't even stay. He didn't even stay for the whole game. And I thought, I don't know him. We had a 30 second conversation and the truth of the matter is I met him at a friend's house and I led this other guy to believe that I knew Ronnie Barrett. Now you're like, Big A, now you're going down a path here that you're getting into the minutiae and the weeds. No, I think it's important. Here's why I think it's important. Because people learn to trust you when your words are accurate. And I want your speech to be accurate. And I've struggled with that my entire adult career wanting to be the big shot, wanting to be the guy that knew people. It stroked my ego. And real friends of mine have really taken me to task decades ago about that and said, Big A, be careful with that because you want to build a reputation that people believe. Now, I want to switch gears. Who is a friend? Who is that person? A friend to me is somebody that I've gone in the trenches with, that know my wife, that know my children, that know my grandchildren people we've been on vacation with, people that we have multiple dinners, we go to movies, we get to know each other, people that borrow things from you and you borrow things from them, people that are really your friend. Several years ago, I'd loaned my pressure washer to a friend of mine and I needed it. And so he didn't bring it back. And I hope he's watching this this morning. He knows exactly who he is. And so Holly was still at home at that time. I said, Holly, you wanna ride with me to this guy's house? I'm gonna get my pressure washer. She said, sure. So I got in the car, went there. He wasn't at home. Well, I knew where the key to the house was. So I went over and got the key, unlocked the door and walked in. When I did, the alarm went off. Well, as soon as the alarm went off, I went, uh-oh, <laughs> he's never given me the alarm code. So I picked up the phone, I called him and I said, hey, what is your alarm code? And he said, well, it's one, two, three, four, five. And I hit one, two, three, four, five, turned it off. I said, okay, thank you. And I hung up. Well, I turned around and looked at Holly and Holly was just dumbfounded. She said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I said, what? She goes, he didn't even ask you why you wanted the code. He didn't even know we were there and you were in his house and he trusted you enough that he gave you his alarm code. 
And I said, that's what a friend is. A friend is somebody that trusts you. And I want to ask you today, how many friends do you have that trust you, that you know them intimately, that you can do things like that and get away with it? We need to be careful when we say someone is our friend rather than an acquaintance. And the reason is, is because we want people to trust us long term. So I challenge you today, who are your friends and who are your acquaintances? Well, hey, I'm Big A, coming to you this morning from the Station Camp Greenway. Let's get out there and have a great week. We'll see you.